Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Ricksty Minutes. We're back with the finale of Season 3, Episode 10, The Rick Churry yeah. and Morty Date. The last episode of Ricksty Minutes for the foreseeable future. Yeah, possibly for years. Could be years until the next one. Unless we decide to, like, go back and do the other seasons at some point. Which we could do. Which feeling we could masochistic. Do. Mm. Maybe as, like, a, a batch we could do the season or something. But in any case... It could be more interesting, because those ones already have commentary and stuff that we could right. through. Right, which I have not watched any of, but would very much like to, based on what you've told me about them. They're really fun. Mm. They're worth watching. But anyway... Let's get into it. So, uh, Rick Churian, Morty Date... Oh, I'm Digibro, by the way. Oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I cut I'm you best off. guy ever. There you go. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this is the the season finale. Kind of sprung on me out of nowhere, because mm-hmm. for some reason, previously on Wikipedia, it had suggested that this would be a 13-episode season. So I really thought they were, like, going all out and making it a longer one. And considering how much plot development happened this season, it felt like that would be the case. Yes. But then suddenly it was yes. just, oh, episode 10, that's the last one, and it's just fucking over. Did you feel, and, uh, uh, uh I, I don't remember where I read this, but somewhere I think, think I read that, uh, 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 Justin Roiland specifically said, like, yeah, we were supposed to do 13, it got shrunk down to 10, sorry about that, uh, next time we'll try to do better. I can't remember where I read that. If that's the case, that. mm-hmm. I, I have the feeling that there were a lot of production um, mishaps on this season Indeed. and that that contributes a lot to why it took so fucking long to make because mm, mm. there was a definite sensation I had from this episode and this is skipping right to the end right but um the the last scene sort of restores things to normal mm-hmm. like they were in season one sort of gets us back to the status quo and Beth says like outright it's basically gonna be like season one except more <laughs> streamlined from now on indeed and <laughs> I couldn't help but think that what happened here like what happened with this whole season mm-hmm. was that by the end of season two they'd written themselves into this place where it's like we are now going to do a continuous narrative with this show right and I think maybe in the process of trying to hash out what that continuous narrative is, it became apparent that this was not a good idea, or that they didn't know how, or that there just wasn't a way. And so yeah. they went, yeah. uh, let's, let's just address all the open-ended things this season, mm-hmm. and then just kind of wrap back into something normal that we can continue with. You know, that's how it felt to me. I would be inclined to agree. Uh, And especially the the whole ending scene feels extremely tacked on to the end of this. I mean, what's fascinating to me about this episode, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is the first episode of Rick and Morty where the B plot has been a thousand times better than the A plot. And it was it was so unusual for the show to spend so much time on this this whole like presidential like uh breakup uh you know like bad yeah. feelings thing and then like and then we get to the thing that actually matters like last episode yeah. we were like oh man will they ever address will we ever see an addressing <laughs> yeah, and then it happened immediately. this fucking episode and we're past it it's done the questions are answered yeah. in the trash it goes uh amazing and and not That's in a good what- way I I kind of feel yeah it, it's a weird feeling. Mm-hmm. I can easily imagine the writers with this story seeing it kind of spiraling out of control and yeah. getting too mm. because like if you look back at what Rick and Morty was, what the successful formula was, like season one was not great because it had an ongoing plot. It mm-hmm. had little tidbits of like emotional stuff that carries over. Like you know. In one episode, they they ditch their universe. In another episode, it's confirmed that they are still in the ditched universe. There is a continuity. Whoa, right, right. that's abnormal in some way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then by the time we get to Rick has overthrown the government of the entire mm-hmm. cosmos, <laughs> and like there's all this background shit going on. And now Beth, what if she goes and has her own adventure? And I have the feeling someone had to go like, um. We can't write about Beth and her adventures because this is going to get so unfocused. Oh, they fucked up so that, bad. Like, you oh. know. Well, the, the, the correct way to handle that we already addressed, or at least I think we did last episode. You just go have her do her adventures, and then like in a season or two or whatever, you can have an episode about that Beth. And then it, it blindsides yeah. everyone. We're like, oh my god, 
We, we totally forgot about that, but that's this has been the fake bet the whole time. This recontextualizes everything I thought. Like, everyone would have yeah. loved that. It would have been super cool. But they're just like, no, too much work. We can't do all that. We just want to address it but, and move yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, but then if they leave that open thread, then it's just one more thing they got to worry. I, I, uh, th- I guess, There was yeah. something yeah. cheap about, like, and I'm not celebrating that they did this necessarily, mm-hmm. but I couldn't help but feel like the ending of this season was their way of going, ah, just put it all back to normal. Like, oh, I don't want to sure. deal with this anymore. No doubt. You know, no doubt. Like, fuck, what have we done? Like, and and just seeing that, you know, that several episodes have commented on the slowness of the season coming out, mm-hmm. the fact, like, the conflicts in getting it made. Like, it's pretty clear that Dan and Justin have, like, I've only been picking up, like, random things, like, tertiary yeah, knowledge yeah. about this, mm-hmm. but people have been saying, like, that they've been addressing a lot of issues. Like, apparently Dan Harmon hated the yeah. episode we hated. The Vindicators, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's the Vindicators. Right. And, and good stuff man, like that. he's got good taste, obviously. Yeah. And it so it makes me think, man, it must have just been fucking chaos putting the season together. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm I'm thinking that they, they hit simultaneously the most ambition they wanted to have with the show and mm-hmm. the least they could actually do with the show at the same time. You yeah. know, that's yeah. that's the kind of feeling I'm getting. But this is all speculation. And it's interesting because this show has absolutely blown up this season. This has been the season, yeah. post-season two. I, I mean, it was a long time after post-season two into this. But now people are really paying attention to the show just in time for it to... Stumble a little bit, stumble along its way. Not completely, obviously. Some of these episodes were fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's unavoidable. But but I don't know. Is this still going to happen? You think? As the show clearly is taking on an even bigger role than it had, uh, you I know, mean, previously. The, the yeah. funny thing about Rick and Morty, and this was already the case in season two, mm-hmm. is it's it's too big for itself. Yeah, like yeah. it's too successful because. It's on fucking Adult Swim. Right. Like, it's never going to be a, like, high-budget production. It's always going to be, like, this weird, off-kilter passion project. And the fact that it has this kind of attention is kind of, like, strange. It's almost like with... uh, Mm -hmm. With My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, a show we're both very familiar with, (laughs) where... I know what you're talking about. Uh, the show suddenly erupts in popularity right around the time that the actual lead writer is leaving because, right, like, right. it sucks to work on the show, you know? And then you get this weird, muddied storyline in production where, as the show's getting more popular, it's also getting worse, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I feel like we're seeing something similar here where it, I don't I don't even necessarily think the season is worse but like there's clearly been issues with the production where like the popularity of the show is taking people from the show right um right. and you know leaving them not able to actually make the the satis- the so the show that will satisfy its new huge well, audience that's that's my question do you think will will we finally see a stoppage of the leak of talent from Rick and Morty because it's so popular now will they finally recognize I don't know. like Okay, that's it. Does Let's it make more money this. by being more popular? I, it's a good question. I Is don't know. Adult Swim like able to pay these people I mean, enough how, to how, keep them? You know, how have they made all these like spinoff like games and shit, and all these like shorts and these three D, you know, whatever, uh, uh, like all the spinoff stuff that's come from Rick and Morty? How the fuck was it all financed? And like, were those I have no idea? Uh, just I, if all those make money, then like, okay, maybe they can pay for themselves. But how do they get people on these projects to make these? Uh, I, I I don't know. I guess it's uh, all part of the 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 zeitgeist that's carried Rick and Morty yeah. to the popularity it's at now. And I'll I'll say I'm gonna t- to to since we're talking about the meta of the yeah, season yeah. anyways. To talk it's more about interesting my than overall, the content of this episode. For the most part, yeah. yeah. And I don't hate this episode. I thought it was fine, but mm-hmm. like it's not the one that has the most deep shit to talk about. Indeed. Um, season three as Compared a whole. Compared to the last season finale, like Jesus yeah. Christ. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I almost felt like this one was deliberately retarded. I got some. Like, in- yeah, I got a little of that. <laughs> like just because it was so like so dumb with the president thing like yeah, like yeah. going above and beyond to make the president <laughs> this petty idiotic character mm-hmm. and to focus so much on this dumb story almost felt like they were deliberately making sure you know like okay we're not doing that again season two finale was a fluke that's not where this is going <laughs> we're restoring normalcy we're going back to sitcom roots you yeah, know yeah, yeah. <laughs> this felt like a sitcom episode like this episode in some ways, it felt almost 
Family Guy esque to me. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, but then to be more kind to it, I would compare it to an episode of The Venture Brothers, like sure. just that kind of sense of irreverence, but while you know applying the unique brand of this show to a sort of classic scenario, like mm-hmm. working for the president, you know, right, which just right. feels like a like an old school sitcom premise almost. Um, but yeah, it's uh. And I, I think it's a goofy, fun time. I I enjoyed what I got, but it definitely was weird to I see just, this as the season finale. Uh, well, that, that's the whole thing. I really feel, I have no way of knowing if this is true or not, but I really think this is just like one of the episodes, considering we know so much about uh, how many problems there were just getting this made and the, you know, we, yeah. I, I can't, I wish I had actually looked this up, but I, I know somewhere Justin Roiland said like, yeah, they fucked up and they couldn't make as many episodes as they wanted to. I really feel like this was just going to be an episode in the series, but then they got to the crunch time and they're like, oh fuck, we need to yeah. make this the season finale. And then they like, they either slapped on the, the Beth plot into this and the whole ending thing where they wrapped all that shit up. Uh, that's what it feels like to me. But that that's not to say that I didn't enjoy the president stuff, uh, because I did. It was it was good and fun. I just the whole time I was sitting here knowing this was the season finale and was like, okay, ready to be impressed. Here I am sitting here looking for that good shit. Oh, this Beth thing's going on. Something inter- interesting is going to happen with that, and it, it did. The Beth plot was interesting, but like so much yeah. more time was devoted to the president stuff. And, and the, hey, the fight, the fight that Rick has with the president was like dope as shit. And yeah. uh, like, I love that they incorporated all the things that have been brought up so far about the White House, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. that they go through all like because you don't have to question all this crazy shit that they're that's happening underneath the White House because we've already established before that all this shit exists. Have those all White been House, mentioned yeah. or have they been shown before? I thought that about some uh, of them. He, remember he at the beginning he's talking about how mm. like oh th- th- don't go into the like the lincoln slave whatever and like this other sh- he's costume. like yeah, yeah. the uh like coke room which they fall into the coke room right and he's, right he's faced it a bowl of coke so you know like <laughs> that's true you know, but i some I, of the stuff that would have been harder to explain i guess is, i really uh, like seeing it, 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 it's like the president the the battle president aesthetic i was i like surprisingly a lot he had all this tech like uh my favorite was when he pulls out like his watch and points the laser at rick and and then, like, oh, an yeah. orbiting satellite shoots the laser down from space. That's the Hammer of dark. Dawn from Gears of War. That's the one. That's, that That's the one. Yeah, it was fucking great. And, like, the little uh, the little twins that he just blows the whistle yeah. and they turn to monsters. Yeah, it was good shit, man. That whole fight was great. Yeah, that was by far the, the most entertaining part up until that point it felt a little slow but the mm-hmm. fight was the, the the rick and morty genius of lots of things happening really fast without explanation but you kind of get it yep. you know like yep. racing just just a little bit ahead of your able ability to parse the information you know you have to be an intellectual to like rick and morty <laughs> there it is Nate. there it is yeah <laughs> so and that leads me into what i really want to talk about meta wise which mm-hmm. is that I hate that the show has gotten popular, and I hate watching it with the world. Um, <laughs> I couldn't agree and more. And I know this is this is this is the most hipster I'm ever gonna sound, but I miss when Rick and Morty was just my show. You know, I know exactly and, how you feel. And it's not even that I got in on the ground floor of it. Like I found out about it. Like, throughout season one, I was hearing the early review saying, like, this is the best show on TV, when no yeah, one was talking yeah. about it. Um, you know, uh, Film Crit Hulk was, I think, the first person I, I heard it from. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I watched, I caught up in between seasons one and two. I got everyone I knew to watch it, because I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. Um, watched was the commentaries, watched the episodes, like, four times, you know. And then season two rolled around, and... Uh, when they when there were the leaked episodes, I was way excited about them. Like I watched each of those leaked episodes, you know, multiple times. Yep, yep. And then it came for where the show was actually airing, and I was watching it week by week. And first of all, I I think watching anything week by week will always make it worse. Mm-hmm. And this is I've stuck to I firmly fucking believe in this. And every time so I've tried to challenge it, I've come up failing. Like. No matter what, Mm -hmm. if you watch a show week by week, it will be worse because every time it falters a little, it's a much bigger deal. Mm -hmm. You know, I marathoned season one the first time and it was just amazing. Of course. You know, like Mm -hmm. it was just Mm -hmm. perfect. And I marathoned it like three more times and I could eventually pick out which episodes I thought were weaker from the others, Mm -hmm. but like it never felt like a big deal. This season, when we got to the Revengeancers episode, it was like, this is real. Like for a whole week, it was like, ah, 
You know, I legit was not excited about doing this podcast for a lot of the podcast run yeah, after that episode. I know what you mean. Like, it was always scary. Like, am I going to go in and watch a <laughs> shitty episode of Rick and Morty and have nothing to say about it? And 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 then deal with the comments who are never appreciative of what we have yeah, they to don't say give a about shit. the show? <laughs> like, I very quickly abandoned reading the comments for Rick's Minutes because... It's a lot, it's, they're weird, because we get lots of people who don't really know who we are, because they're just, like, looking for Rick and Morty podcasts. I enjoy I that, but, uh, yeah, um, I know what you mean. Yeah, and it's, it's just been a, it's been a weird experience keeping up with the season, and, like, I feel like after season two, which I think everyone agrees was overall great, like, mm-hmm, even though mm-hmm. for me, I felt less enthusiastic about it than I was about season one just by way of watching it week by week, I still ultimately enjoyed it a lot. I think after season two, everyone felt really entitled to great Rick and Morty, you know? I hear what you're saying. And when season three rolled around and anything wrong with it got picked apart to shreds because the people like me who loved the first two seasons and wouldn't shut up about it like idiots. Like, I I feel (laughs) stupid because all I did was rave and rave and rave about how this show is so perfect. And now every time anything slightly imperfect happens, everyone, like, (laughs) oh, the female writers. Rick and Morty wasn't the greatest show on television this week. So, you know, so... uh, I mean, yeah. these female writers are just such intellectuals. We can't understand what they're going for. It's that, uh, and then people, people who fucking <laughs> rag on the Rick and Morty fan base, which I, as as is always the case, mm-hmm. I've never seen the annoying fans. I've only seen the people complaining about the annoying <laughs> fans. You know, like I've never once, it, unless one of the people was, who's making fun of them, like literally reposts their shit yeah. and then I see it and I go yeah well that guy's clearly a fucking like retarded like literally retarded you know like posting the, the like Facebook group of the, the people who see themselves as Ricks yeah, right. and are My like favorite playing people Ricks. in the world and it's like okay <laughs> these people are clearly not indicative of most of the people watching this show like you can't say oh the Rick and Morty fandom are so like no well you know like, uh, that's it's, it's selective reason because you know, of course, yeah. you're gonna w- w- with people who want to defend the like the fandom, they'll look at the people they like best and be like, "Oh, those other guys, they're not the real ones." Whereas if you're on, if you're like looking for a reason, sh- if you hear one person be annoying about Rick and Morty, you're just gonna be like, "Those fucking fans, they're all like this, right. is the worst." Yeah, uh, I don't. Who's I to say which is that. more prevalent? Like when I see an annoying per idiot like participating in a fandom i think wow yeah. that's an annoying idiot you know it has nothing to do with the show they like because guess what every show has annoying retarded fans mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i can't name a show that doesn't have any annoying retarded fans so this whole position like it's somehow rick and morty's like specifically has this problem it's like no it's just a show <laughs> that people are talking about right now so those people boil to the surface you know it's just the nature of anything that gets too popular people will yeah. like it uh, th- there will always be be someone who likes it to an obnoxious degree and uh, just be big on the train for a uh, uh, burp. Uh, nothing matters, Morty. Uh, belch. Uh, uh, every, God's not real. Burp. I'm I'm gay, Morty. Suck my dick. Yeah, it's uh, it's inevitable. It's the nature of fandom. I will say the most gratifying thing about this season was listening to the Dick Show and hearing him reference Rick and Morty almost every week. Oh, that's cool. Ch- not not even anything specific, just referencing the fact that he's watching it. And oh. I was always like, yeah, Rick and Morty. <laughs> how, how how nice for you, did you? How nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad That's you enjoyed that. the best that. thing about watching this show for me. <laughs> You know, now I'm starting to get why people uh, wanted to hear this episode of Rixie Minutes come out. Because, uh, yeah, I feel I feel a bit of emptiness after watching this episode. Just, I, yeah. I, I, and again, I think it is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't frame it as entitlement uh, to a good episode, but... Heightened expectations uh, cer- sure. certainly are there, and uh, I mean this. This was definitely a case where about four minutes into the episode, I went, "Oh, okay," you know, not, yeah. maybe not even that far. Like it was that feeling of I, I loading up the last episode, thinking like, "What's is it gonna be a, a big? Is it gonna, like because I haven't heard anything? No, nobody's been freaking out. Mm-hmm. Everybody's been telling me when are you gonna do the last sixty minutes? Nobody's been saying it's a crazy episode. Yeah, you know, like yeah. it's just been when are you gonna do it? So I start watching it, and a few minutes in, I'm like, "Oh, it's not gonna be anything. Like if this is not gonna <sighs> be a big 
season closer episode you it's, know it's 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 you know it's fine but it's unfortunate that just like like a standalone episode like the uh, like the toxic rip episode was like in my opinion quite superior to this one this is yeah. just, like the whole point there's there's just this the joke of the president is jealous that rick broke up with him or something they have a big president battle there's some cool stuff that happens and then Beth immediately has confronted the issue that was set up last episode about if she's a clone or not. Yeah. So both the, one was kind of not that interesting and the other was like kind of kind of a premature ejaculation on like a thing I was expecting to to be a part of the narrative and just not, like I was really looking forward to going into next season as well and thinking about like ooh what does this indicate that this is clone Beth or this is real Beth what can I yeah. learn from this I, I, they didn't have to go that way but I was like expecting that and this really is just like blowing their load immediately and uh, it's just right. a, it's a little disappointing so what and can I do yeah the whole president plot I mean this episode's kind of a sequel to the show me what you got episode yes. from season two yes which was at a perfect place in that season episode four mm-hmm. we've mm-hmm. already been hit with some really heavy sci-fi stuff later we'll get hit with some more emotional stuff but right here <laughs> here's a goofy fun episode about saving America <laughs> bringing back the which the president himself is not that memorable a character from no. that episode no he was not um so, like, bringing him back, I had to kind of take a second and, like, I remember thinking, oh, I guess uh, President's still black in the Rick and Morty universe. Like, yeah, right. I, and then I remembered that it was a character that they had before, and I was like, oh, right. I, you know, like. Whenever I think about a situation like this, like, so, yeah, this is this is basically them saying, like, okay, we've got this character, let's recycle him and do something interesting with it. And they manage yeah. that reasonably okay. The problem that happens every time is that... I always my favorite example to go to is the party god from Adventure Time. The party god yeah. in Adventure Time was the best character ever conceived because he was a giant floating wolf head with a backwards baseball cap who supercharges uh I think Jake at some point so that he can go like save uh uh I was going to call him Morty. <laughs> Fucking uh, what the fuck is the kid's name from Adventure Finn. Time? Finn, yes, thank you. Um, and he just shows up at one point, completely out of nowhere. He does this magical thing. It's hilarious. And then he leaves. And then way later, like seasons later in Adventure Time, they like made an episode developing the character of the party god. And it was like, what the fuck are you doing? That That's like... Yeah. Uh, that's that's just such he a misunderstanding of what the character's supposed joke. to be. That exactly yeah. that that is a one off joke. Rick, Rick that, and Morty's definitely had some of these issues. Mm-hmm. I would say it's done reincorporation really well. I yeah. think Bird Person was reincorporated well. Um, like, uh, fucking the first Tammy? time that well, that's Bird Person as well. well the, I fir- guess. the first time that Gear Guy was brought back and Rick yeah, like yeah. replaced his eyes with his balls, that was great. The second time Gear Guy is brought back this season was mm-hmm. terrible, and it was like, why do you keep bringing back this character? Like, why why did it have to be him? You know, why is he uh, there? At they're getting all? lazy, dude. They, I, I mean, I'm not yeah. saying that the show is like lazy itself, but but that Invent is a lazy idea to do. Exactly. Like, they're we did not get that. We didn't get a wealth of great new characters this season. I no, we did think. not. No, we did In not. In fact, I can't think of one I particularly cared about. A lot of people like that guy. Uh, what was his name? Cougar or J- Jaguar? That action Jaguar. guy. He was. He was pretty he was cool. Just was pretty whatever. Cool. He served his purpose um, in the episode, and I don't ever really care about seeing him again, though, so uh, yeah. that, that's fair. Remember Unity? Remember fucking Unity from season two? She is like. That's like yeah. the best character ever. I fucking love Unity. Not to mention like the incredible relationship. That's like the she has best episode Rick. of the whole it, fucking it is, show. It is. It is one of the best. But that, plus like the well, ending the first, is legendary. Yeah. I would say the first three episodes of season no, episodes two and three of season two are like the two best episodes. What was the other the one show? besides the Unity episode there? I can't um, remember. Episode two is the one with the fucking when they go to uh, Blitz and Chits. Oh yeah. And uh, and they meet the fart cloud. Yep. That's a, that's a that good whole one. one. Um Wait, is that the same episode? I think so. No, you, yeah, you're right. I think it's got the it's got Crum, Crumbopulous Michael in it. Yep, yep. The yeah. Anyway, coolest guy. Who, I can actually remember that name, by the way. I could not have remembered that's, that. That's, if that's, you asked me, that's insanity. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, blah. I don't know what else to say about this finale. It yeah, was kind nothing. of underwhelming. It was, uh, you know, the season was okay. I would say this would not be, I, I don't think the season would have disappointed people if it hadn't taken so long to come out. Yes, you know, that's important. Um, and I hope, I 
I wish upon a star that next time I'll somehow be able to watch it weekly, but I know that, or not watch it weekly rather, but I know that won't be the case. Yeah. I'm going to end up having to, and it's going to perpetually ruin this show for me, what as the- has happened to every other show I've ever watched weekly. <laughs> uh, you know what? I do want to, I want to challenge you. Don't you think that our enjoyment of Arrow Manga Sensei was heightened by the fact that we had to well, stew on every episode in between them and just, just get ready? Enjoyment. <laughs> of our reactions to it. Sure. Exactly. That's what that, that's what it was all about. That's what it was Incidentally, all about. Incidentally, uh, Maiden Abyss Weekly will probably finish that at some point. Indeed. Indeed. Very soon, I think. And uh, if anybody cares who listens to this show. By the way, uh, let me let me let me shout out two jokes that were hilarious and I loved. Okay. <laughs> do it quick, cause I gotta poop. Oh, okay, we'll do. So remember when uh, when the president is growing back in size and they just give him the shirt. Because apparently he needs to swing his yeah. dick around. Hilarious. I laughed. G- good. Uh, and the other one was when uh, uh, <laughs> it just went when the president is like ordering this guy to clean his room, and he's just like, "I don't think you even know what Secretary of Interior means." Just yeah. small side. I laughed. That was a weird one, but I did that, think it was. That's kind of funny. well, you know, Rick and Morty is a pretty intellectual series. You know, not everybody's gonna get it. You know, you gotta you gotta think about it. Oh, and yeah. also when. Uh, when Morty's just like, uh, I don't know, Commander and Queef want to count my pubes. I laughed. I laughed. Yeah. That's it. I got nothing else. All right, everybody. See you in the future. Possibly, Possibly in years. Like uh, Poopy Bubble says, yep, we're all uh, dead. Infinite universes. Choices don't yeah. matter. Consequences don't matter. Kill yourself. Do whatever you want, everybody. That's that's my thing. Peace. Bye-bye. Oh my god, I almost forgot to add the last thing. Hey everybody, best guy ever, world famous Rick and Morty analyst here. Yo, you know how Minecraft was in this fucking episode? Oh, I thought it was really dope how, like, in real life, like, the president's portal, like, had to be lit with a fucking lighter, uh, like in Minecraft. Uh, I am a Minecraft specialist. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, uh, 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 I'll see you next time. Bye bye